This is the first video that I uploaded to Bark and Jack over three years ago. The walk onto screen, that wasn't intentional. I recorded the first few videos on an iPhone, so I had to press record on the iPhone and then sit behind the table. However, the coffee cup and the coffee machine behind me were completely intentional. I wanted those products to set the scene, but this isn't where coffee and Bark and Jack started. For that, we need to go back even further, probably another three years earlier on Instagram. I started to use coffee in my shots on Instagram as a bit of a uh, and, and F you a little bit of a rebellion against the whole culture of taking photographs of Rolexes draped over champagne bottles. I found that massively pretentious and a bit elitist and that wasn't the side of the watch scene that I liked. I really liked the idea of this item that's perceived to be luxurious. I like the idea that this is just kind of made common by being draped over a coffee mug. For the channel, the coffee just set the scene for the style of content that I wanted to do. I wanted to do relaxed content. I wanted to do content that felt like you and I were just down the coffee shop having a chat. I wanted that for my headspace because it felt weird talking to a camera. I didn't like the idea that I was talking to a camera and now I don't think that I'm talking to a camera. I think that I'm talking directly to you. And coffee hasn't just been a photography prop or a branding thing for a YouTube setting. It's the culture. I love the coffee shop culture. My dream would be to have a watch shop that's connected to a coffee shop, which makes no commercial sense. But I just like that, uh, that kind of styling, that atmosphere. I don't like stuck up watch shops. I, I think there's a big disconnect between myself and, and that styling. So I started to connect coffee with Bark and Jack about six years ago, but let's fast forward to August, 2020. We were in lockdown, listening to Houdinki Radio, and this happened. Can, can I just give a quick shout out just as, as a public thanks to some of the people around the world. Whoever the guy is that does the reads on watchfinder.co.uk, you're a legend. Adrian from Bark and Jack, ID guy from South Africa. I messaged Miles on Instagram and said, thanks for the shout out. We had a bit of back and forth for a while. A couple of weeks later, he sent me this message. We had a catch up on Zoom and that catch up kind of turned into hours and hours of just chatting. It's cool when you just have this connection with someone. We're talking about watches, ideas, creation, creative. He's a massively creative person. Then he introduced the fact that he actually runs a coffee company in California called Bixby. He makes coffee, he likes Bark and Jack. Let's make Bark and Jack coffee. We've spent months back and forth playing around with different roasting, playing around with different blends, and just kind of messing about with coffee. We actually found the right coffee very early on. Trying to be more clever than just having a single origin, but I couldn't get my head beyond the fact that I just loved this Nicaraguan coffee. We just had to do this as our first Bark and Jack coffee. This is it. This is the Bark and Jack, the first Bark and Jack coffee, Nicaragua. This is a single origin, dark roast. These beans have been grown in Nicaragua on the side of a mountain, 2,400 feet up, near tobacco and cocoa plants. And those flavors influence the flavor of the coffee. This has notes of almond, vanilla, and dark chocolate. It's roasted in California and it's a dark roast. It's roasted to the second pop, which is a dark roast perfect for espresso. And the beans, when you see them, they actually look a little wet. And that's just the oils that have been released from the bean during this roasting process. We all have our own process and recipe for making coffee, but I know a lot of you have a similar machine to what I have. Uh, so I thought I'd take you through what I do. I have the Sage Barista Express. With these beans, I actually use 16 grams of coffee at a two to one ratio. So I want to use 16 grams of coffee beans. I want to extract 32 grams of coffee out. Don't put all the beans into the hopper because the beans are just gonna dry out and the coffee's gonna go bad. Keep the beans in the bag because that's gonna keep the coffee fresher for longer. For espresso, you want quite a fine grind. I have this machine set to number two for the grind, but these machines aren't high precision machines. So if you have the same machine, it might not be setting two. When you grind coffee with a burr grinder, it can make the coffee static. And so it then ends up sticking inside the grinder. Watch how much coffee comes out of the hopper when I use a lid to kind of push air through the hopper. And then you'll see how much coffee comes out the bottom. There's at least uh, a, a gram, gram and a half of coffee 
Two things with that. One, if you don't bellow out the coffee, then uh, you're losing out on the amount that you've weighed out. So you're not getting the actual true measurements. But also the second thing is, if you leave that coffee in there, it's gonna go stale. And so the next time you do a grind, you're then mixing fresh ground coffee with stale ground coffee. I'm gonna make my uh, kind of normal coffee, my morning coffee, uh, which is essentially an espresso, but with a little touch of steamed foamed milk on top. The best coffee I had was in the Alps, in the Swiss Alps. And I love how they have espresso, where you can have espresso with their really creamy milk uh, and it just tastes amazing. So this is kind of my way of replicating that. It doesn't matter which button you use because I'm in manual mode. I only use this machine in manual mode. Hold it down for five seconds and that does a five second of pre-infusion. You see the lights flashing after five seconds, then lift the finger off the button and then it goes into full power. I like my dial, my pressure dial to just go over 12 o'clock. I don't know how accurate this is, so you kind of just play around with it. But for me, the sweet spot, I think, is just over 12 o'clock. Just a little covering of milk. So this is it. This is a bad choice of mug. That's, that's better. But this is the coffee. This is a Bark and Jack coffee. And I know this is my product, but genuinely, this is shit hot coffee. Just properly good coffee. One thing that I do like about coffee, and it's not, not just this coffee, any coffee, is the, the hobby around coffee. Because coffee is, if you're new to coffee, you might not be aware, but coffee is a massive hobby, just as much as cars, as, as collecting watches. But the fun thing about coffee is that you can get involved with it. With watches, I'm kind of in awe of the mechanics of a watch. I can't open up a watch and, and play around with it. I can just look at it and appreciate it. Whereas with coffee, there's engineering, there's science that goes into it, uh, but you can manipulate that. At the end of the day, your job is just to create a drink that you like. It doesn't matter how you go about it, it's about creating a drink that you like. But if you create a drink that you don't like, I enjoy that problem solving process of figuring out what should I change? Do I need to change the coffee? Do I need to change the grind? Do I need to change the tamp? Do I need to change the pressure, the duration? There's so many elements that go involved and it's easy to manipulate that. It's also the sort of hobby that it's as expensive as you want it to be. You can, this is an AeroPress. This costs 20 quid and you can make great coffee with an AeroPress. Equally, you could go spend a thousand pounds on just a grinder. The thing that I like the most about coffee is it's all about timing. Now, stupidly, what I used to time my coffees was my iPhone or my Apple Watch. <laughs> it took an embarrassing long time for me to figure out that, Adrian, you're timing something. You like watches, maybe it's time to get a chronograph. Now, I like chronographs. I like the look of chronographs but for some reason, I just prefer simple watches, simple time only watches, that's just my style. So what else can I do other than get a chronograph? You can treat yourself to pocket stopwatches. <laughs> I've fallen down this rabbit hole of, there's another one somewhere, but these things are stunning and they're not expensive, they can be expensive, but they don't have to be. This Smiths, this is from 1974, this is, a gorgeous thing, British made watch, uh, and it still works. I think I paid 25 quid for it, and it is stunning. It looks amazing. But for me, it's about finding something that's that's fun and, and to kind of add a little bit more enjoyment to my coffee making, and that's what these little things do. It's really cool that these two worlds, these two hobbies of coffee and watches, Although technically they don't make sense, especially for me to sell straps and coffee, but they do make sense. And there is a genuine connection between the two of them. This coffee is now live over at barkandjack.com and you can either buy it as a single bag or subscribe to the coffee club and have this stuff delivered every week, or every couple of weeks, however you want it. And it is super easy to unsubscribe from that. It's literally as easy as unsubscribing from a newsletter. I know this has been one long advert for a new product that I've launched, but it's also a nice opportunity to share another passion that I have. I get to share my videography and my photography passion with you. I obviously get to share my watch passion with you, but coffee is a big passion of mine. It's, it's a big hobby and it is a genuine part of Bark and Jack. It always has been, whether it's been obvious or not, it's always there. It genuinely is drinking 
That sticker looks crap. It generally is drinking coffee and talking watches. I promise you next week we're going to be getting back to normal. Uh, there's going to be proper watch, normal watch content. I don't want to jinx it, but I might be getting hands on with um, an epic watch. Maybe. I don't want to jinx it. Guys, thanks so much for listening to this. If you want to check out the coffee, jump over to barkandjack.com and check out the watch straps and watch accessories that we have over there as well. If you order coffee, and a strap, it's going to come separately because the coffee's going to come from California, strap's going to come from me, well, the wife. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack and uh, enjoy the coffee. I'll see you next time. Take care.